Okay, I'd like to call to order the Edina Community Health Commission meeting, Monday, December 1st, 2014. Um, I'll take a look at the agenda that we've received ahead of time. Does anyone have any edits, changes, things they'd like to take a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, looking at the November meeting minutes, we received a copy here tonight um, that had some edits that came by email earlier today. Looking at the copy you just received, does anyone have any additional comments or edits they would like to make? Okay. Hearing none, take a motion to approve. I move to approve the November 2014 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the community comment portion of the evening. This is when we invite the general public to come and speak to us if they would like to. And seeing no one, we will move ahead. Um, we're going to move into now the reports and recommendations section of our agenda, which is going to start with a presentation and a discussion with members of the Edina High School Sober Squad and the Edina Committed Group. And I'll have our student member, Megan Perzer, lead that discussion. Hi, um, we're from Edina High School and we're a sober squad in Edina Committed, so we're pretty much all of the kids that are involved with anything about illegal substance abuse at the high school. Um, first off, we're just going to go in a line and introduce ourselves and say what grade we're in and what we do at the high school. My name is Rehab Alimam, I do DECA and I'm in Spanish Club and I'm a member of Sober Squad. Hi, I'm Megan, um, I play soccer and I'm in DECA and 212. Hi, I'm Maddie Lockhart, and I'm on the varsity cheerleading team. I'm also in Sober Squad, and I'm Model UN, and help at my church. Hi, I'm Diana Espana, and um, I'm part of Model UN, um, Sober Squad 212, and, um, and yeah. I'm Jeringal King. I, uh, I'm an Edina FCA leader. I'm a captain of the varsity golf team. I'm on 212, Sober Squad, and uh, leader at Grace Church. And I'm Annie Ingen. Um, I was a varsity soccer captain. Um, I'm involved in 212 leadership and DECA and Edina committed. Okay, well, since I'm the only Edina committed person here, I'll start us off. Um, so, I mean, they'll really get into Sober Squad, but... Um, my opinion is that Sober Squad is very much about, um, like, teaching the public about, like, the consequences of drugs and alcohol abuse. And then Edina Committed is a program at our high school. It started up um, not this year, but the year before that. And we're very big on, like, taking action at our high school, not just informing the kids about it. Um, so while drugs and alcohol are the main focus of our program, we are also... Um, just interested in promoting a healthy lifestyle at the high school. Um, so that means like you're taking care of your body, you're getting enough sleep, you're eating like good nutrition and all that stuff. Um, so um, just background here. Idina Committed um, was formed by this guy right here, John Underwood, and it's part of, um, it's kind of like a subset of a huge program called Life of an Athlete. And so over the summer, um, the picture on the bottom there, um, us four, that's me, Preston Carroll, Catherine McLennan, and Dan James, we went out to New York and to the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, and um, John Underwood made, uh, he had like conferences and presentations, and we listened to him, and he just talked about that whole stuff, like nutrition, sleep, and um, drugs and alcohol, and they're just really interesting facts, like if you, like one night of drinking can eliminate two and a half weeks of training. And I don't know, just all his stuff really got to us. So we brought him back to Edina High School and he made some presentations um, to the school. I don't know if you guys attended that or not. Yeah, um, but so after we brought him to the school and the kids were kind of informed um, from his speech, um, 
we invited all students in, whether they're in a club, an activity, a sport. So like it can be kids in band, it can be kids in varsity sports, JV sports, all that. Um, what they have to do is um, the cap, their sport captain or band captains will um, just tell them what Edina committed is, and um, then we hand them this contract. And by signing this contract, you're saying that I will stay drug and alcohol free. I will do the best I can to promote my healthy lifestyle. And then these contracts are given back to us four leaders with Preston, Catherine, and Dan and I. And um, by signing the contract and handing it to us, you are officially part of Edina Committed. And so, I don't know, what we've really found is by um, getting people to sign these contracts, you are helping your team and there's this form of like trust within your team. And we really try to keep parents out of it, so it's more like a team thing. Because I feel like sometimes when parents are involved, it's a little bit like, you know, like watching you, supervising you, like don't do that. But um, if it's just like you and your teammates, I feel like there's more of that kind of, I don't know, do you get what I'm saying? Like just more of that bond. And so, yeah, that's basically what Edina Committed is. Um, do you guys have any questions? Do do you have any teams that are entirely, do the, does everyone sign the contract, or is it? Um, my basketball team last year, pretty much everyone signed the contract. But, again, this program has just started up, like, it was just started last year. And I know that there are programs, I don't, I don't remember what schools they were. It's all across the nation. But there's some schools that have been doing this for, like, 15 years now. And um, it's, I don't know, it's just really cool, like, Every single sport does it. Every single person signs the contract. Like, it's the cool thing to do at their school. And so, um, I don't know, we really hope that in the future, like, mm -hmm. this will be just a standard thing that everybody does when they join a sport because, yeah, like, the cool thing to do. So is the contract bound per your season, or does it carry it out is to bound, the It is bound, yeah, it's bound for the season, but, I mean, we hope that kids understand. I mean, most kids at Edina High School are, like, you have to be doing your sport all year round if you want to compete at a really high level. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that kids understand that if you want to be like a really good soccer player, you're going to have to, you know, promote a healthy lifestyle all year, not just during your soccer season. Yeah. Do you have a number of people who participated? What percentage of the students participated? You know, I don't have like exact numbers, but I know that pretty much every sport last year um, was involved in it. There, I think there were like two sports that didn't want to get involved. And this year, um, we just talked to all the winter sport captains a few weeks ago. And there, every single sport but one of them was like the captains were going to talk to their team. And they said, like, yeah, pretty much everyone on our team will sign this. And we'll get those contracts back in like a week or two. So, yeah. And you said that the... Um the contracts are open to non-sports as well. Mm -hmm. has, how um, has that been successful, getting people in, you know, I don't know, drama or band or something signed up as well? Yeah. Um, so last year was just athletes. Like, it was pretty much just an athlete thing. And this year we've started opening it up to, like, band and DECA programs and other stuff like that, like business programs. Um and yeah, it's it's been like successful. We we haven't again we haven't gotten the contracts back yet, but um, it, like the leaders of the program sound really enthusiastic and think that their kids will be on board with this. So yeah. So how is this contract different from the state high school league? Because you're not supposed to be drinking and using drugs yeah. when you're in season anyway, right? So yeah. Well, I mean, again, like what I said before, um, like the state high school is kind of like. Um, if you, I think the consequence is if you drink and you get caught, then you will, um, yeah, two games, two weeks, whichever one is longer, that's your punishment. And with this thing, like, it's more about, like, an in your team. It's not like we don't want an adult involvement or anything like that. So it's kind of just earning the respect of your teammates, and it's a team thing, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. What's been the feedback from the students? Um, so my my basketball team, one of the captains on my basketball team was 
um, a leader like me of it last year. And I don't know, our whole team was involved in it. And I think that it's just one less thing to worry about. You don't have to worry about your teammates um, like going out and doing something stupid. And it's one less thing. Like you, if we have a game coming up, you don't have to be like, guys, like remember, don't drink on Saturday. It's just one less thing to worry about. I don't know. Do you guys have any? Have you guys been on a team like that before? Like, yeah. Um, I'm not on hockey, but my friend is on hockey, and a girl decided to drink last year, and she broke her contract. And she, the captains, had her come in front of her entire team and give a little speech and apologize, like formally, to her entire team. And I think that that's kind of a very hard thing to do as a teenager, especially since she wasn't a senior, and coming as like a younger girl and having to say sorry for making a decision is very uncomfortable and I think that avoiding that I mean yeah I think students really like it and I think it actually does a lot more than a consequence because there's so many kids that don't get caught doing it that the state league you know I'm not supposed to but so many kids don't get caught that kids really don't understand that kind of consequence but when your teammate is looking at you and saying you know I'm really not Quickly, all of the data in the power plant was from the League of Women's Voters um, data poll that they did in October of 2014, and it's all based on a student survey. So they do these student surveys every three years, and this is the data that was found on that. But the student survey probably isn't an accurate, completely accurate representation of the actual amount of drinking and use of drugs at the high school. And so as we look at these percentages, I just wanted everyone to know that these are students that are giving these answers. It's not the exact number or amount, but that's where I got my information. Um, we split the slides up and we had the names on them, but I edited it right before we got in here. I don't think they came off, so there might be some names on the PowerPoint. Well, then that's me. I'm Rehab, Ollie Mom again, and um, uh, I joined Silver Scott sophomore year, and we do a lot of speaking events like to the PTO and we inform the seventh and ninth graders um, classrooms of the dangers and consequences of underage substance use. Um, we have 52 um, legit members of Sober Squad. Okay, we have 52 uh, members and we meet on collaborative Wednesdays and Tuesday morning, um, Thursday mornings. And we have a wide mix of students. We have um, athletes, we have band members, we have different clubs, different genders. It's a wide variety of students. And this is our t-shirt. We wear these when we go to parades and things like that. So sometimes if you go to speak at a PTO meeting or things like that, you'll wear the shirt to just kind of Are you done? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then here are some numbers. So the most common age for the first time that um, a teenager uh, drinks alcohol will be from 15 and 16. And then 20% of 11th graders self-report drinking alcohol in previous 30 days. And then 12% of um, 11th grade Boys report uh, uh, binge drinking with approximately five or more drinks during one setting. And then that's also in within the last previous 30 days. And then 6 to 7% of 11th grade boys self-report binge drinking multiple times per month. And then um, adolescents are very sensitive to damage from alcohol ingestion and under sensitive to the warning signs that they have drunk too much alcohol. And then sedation effects of alcohol are not as pronounced in adolescents. Impairment of motor conditions is delay. And then um, I think it's this is just focusing on 11th grade boys and or or girls, which is you know quite a big number for just 11th grade, it's not 10th graders or seniors and stuff like that. So I think it's this number might be growing and um, 
it's pretty concerning. So, yeah. Um, also on alcohol, um, just some trends. Usually, as the years grow, as you get older in high school, the alcohol amount of people using alcohol and drugs increases. So from sophomore to senior year, there's a big jump in the amount of people. A lot of people probably think, you know, it's senior year. I can do it. I'm into college. doesn't matter anymore. And there's a lot of people like that. There's also a huge trend at drinking at dances. So a lot of people, that's just, I don't drink, but I do at dances. That's very common. And the summer. So it's all of those kind of things. But there's also, a, there's actually a higher amount of there's a lot of people that drink more during the school year than the summer, which is weird, but it happens. Um, okay, so some more facts are that 24% um, of junior boys reported to be smoking marijuana more than one time a month. Um, the f average first, the average age of first use is also 15 to 16, and um, Nearly 50% of 11th graders think that classmates smoke marijuana weekly. Like that's just a common perception throughout the junior class. And but only 10% um, of students reported weekly use. So I think it's thought that um, you think that more people are smoking like weekly than really are. Um, and then young people are showing less disapproval of marijuana use and decreased perception that it's dangerous. Um, and just from personal experience, I think that's really true. I think that like with the whole medical marijuana topic that you hear everywhere, people are thinking, if it could be used medically, how could it even be bad for you? Like, If doctors think it can be used, it can't hurt you, can it? So I just don't think a lot of people really know any of the risks or like dangers that come with it. Um. And then um, youth perceptions of their peers level of use varies widely from self-reporting. So like as a junior, I think this is very true because you get to, you know, m mingle with um, students that are sober and then students who are you know, using drugs and alcohol, and then you get this all type of different kind of stereotypes for either your friends or acquaintances that are like, you know, you, you should not be drinking, but then they, you know, they always give you feedbacks of how fun it is and stuff like that. And me as a sober person, I'm always, you know, I, I always try to, um, like be support to them, but then try to really stay away from getting too involved in that. Because, I don't know, I feel like that alcohol and um, drugs topic is growing so much and is being talked by um, pretty much every teenager and every student that um, it's just, I feel like it, it um, like it creates different perspectives and different um, type of personalities in students. Um, you almost see in high school that drinking and drugs become a social norm in that people don't think it's weird and people don't think it's dangerous because everybody does it. And as dangerous as that is for anything in life, it's super dangerous in high school because I don't think enough students are informed of everyone takes health class in seventh grade and most in ninth, but when you're in twelfth grade, you don't remember what you learned in ninth grade. Just like when you're in twelfth grade math, you don't remember what you learned in ninth grade math. And so I think that that's one of the main things is people just people don't remember, and all people know is it's really fun, and that's all people really start to care about. And um, going off the dangers of substance, kids get smarter every year. So you might think, like, with um, older generations, they'll throw parties, and then the parties will be busted. But now people will throw parties, and no one will know about them, only the students. And they can have the parties, and they'll have the drinking and the alcohol and all the substances, but no parent will ever know about it. And kids are finding new ways to buy their substances and alcohol. 
they'll find older siblings, older people to get them the alcohol and the substances they want. They know where to hide it because um, there's new ways of hiding it, I guess, and it's just impressive from the things I hear and how people are like using new ways of hiding everything that they get and when to do it. They almost find any way to do it. Some people have done it during school hours. People have left school during their lunch to do it. People, collaborative Wednesdays where we have about a two hour lunch. People will leave the school and do their substances and come right back and it won't be known because they have a, a really good way of hiding it. It's just everywhere and all always around, but the parents and adults never see it, but all the students know that it's happening. And we need to make more parents and adults aware of what's going on in the school and outside of schools. Um, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, another thing is that I feel from my experience, a lot of parents do know that it's a big issue. And what the problem is is that they think, oh, I did it in high school, or um, like that's just normal. My kid just wants to have fun. But like in reality, that can't be happening. And so um, we need to inform parents about how deadly it is and how, not dead, like, yeah, it is deadly. But <laughs> um, just how bad it is. And so we need to understand that um, parents do know about it and we need to inform the parents that don't know about it and we need to I don't know I'm kind of babbling but um but and also a lot of these kids like they're not like we were talking about this at our last meeting like they're not sitting in a table talking about a book drinking a glass of wine they're like drinking to get drunk and so um like they're not doing it in a place that would be safe for anybody and so like the way that it's being consumed is really dangerous as far as um, alcohol and the drugs go and so that's important to know too um, why like the serious brain and uh, other health issues are really a problem and so like it's they're not drinking a little they're drinking a lot so um, I think another thing about how kids are getting smarter is like they don't always go to big parties to drink a lot of times it's just a friend group sitting in their basement with their parents upstairs even just drinking like not being super obnoxious, not like playing loud music, but just like binge drinking and getting drunk like with their friends. And um, like it's not like cops really have the ability to know that they're in their basement drinking. It's not like a loud party. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then also going off of what Maddie said about how smart uh, kids are coming uh, with ideas to get these substances, um, also, like, a lot of students are being um, exposed, they're exposing themselves to, like, sketchy parks or, like, locations that pretty much nobody else will know or, like, they know that police are not present. And then that's when they will, like, make deals, kind of, you know? And, and that's how, and I feel like that is something that is growing, you know, like between students, they're talking about it, they're talking about where they can get it, where they can hide it, where they can buy it or sell it, which is pretty scary for, you know, their, their own safety. And then um, also with what Maddie was saying with um, more, more of like a personalized um, parties, um, also they're making more, more of like, I've seen for personal experience that um, they're not, they're, they're, so, they're getting so smart that they're not going to come with, you know, a whole bottle that says vodka or, or you know, mm -hmm. or something. They're going to, you know, have it in a water bottle and they will say, oh, it's just water when we all know that it's alcohol. Mm -hmm. So in that, um, in that perspective, I feel like pa parent, parent, the parents are not being well informed. Um, I also, with what Diana was saying, a lot of kids, yes, they do go somewhere and buy it in a sketchy place, but I don't want to fool you. Things like this happen at our school. People are doing drug deals in hallways. People are talking about where they can buy alcohol. It is it is everywhere, and that's why we think it's important to talk to you guys about it because when they get, like, the second you see someone get caught and you see what they do, you know not to do that. And so every year the consumptions are raising and the people drinking are raising because people 
people aren't getting caught. I mean, people are getting caught, but with the amount of people that are increasing drinking and the people that are increasing and getting caught, it's kind of the same amount. Um, so current legal consequences. So um, right now, unlawful consumption can result in fines, mandatory health, education, or community service. Uh, when a student has a contract with the police due to an alcohol offense, the police must notify the student's school. Uh, minors may consume alcoholic beverage in household of their parent or guardian and with the consent of the parent or guardian. Um, and state law also protects minors from prosecution for illegal alcohol consumption if they call 911 to help someone with an emergency. In such a case, they, may, they must stay on the scene until emergency help arrives and cooperate with the authorities. If caught drinking, a student must sit out two games or two weeks with a sport or activity. So that was just kind of going off what Annie said. Oh, I kind of got away from the mic there. Uh, <laughs> but so as far as these consequences... For me as a student, I can, like, you kind of understand that there's, like, different cultures and different friend groups and different classes. And so, like, those numbers were, like, they were not very um, respective of what we know as the um, drinking epidemic at Edina. And so, um, and these kids, when, when a kid gets a consumption, like, everyone's like, oh, they're so stupid. How did they get, like... How did they get caught? Um, like they know they shouldn't do that, but um, in reality, there's a lot more kids drinking that are getting consumptions. And also, from my experience, I know a lot of parents who will almost protect their kid or shelter their kid, so they'll allow enable them to do the behavior, but they won't. Um, they don't want their kid to get caught or get it put on a college resume or 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 on the record or anything like that. And so I know. Like parents get their possessions taking off records or consumptions taking off records or they'll make it so like they don't call the police if a party's unsafe or something like that. And uh, and so like that's a huge problem is we're kind of sheltering it. And uh, so another alcohol citations, our other slide is citations issued for underage alcohol consumption tend to be highest during the school year. Uh, and as a consequence, suspension and punishments in sports and activities. So, um, like dances, we all know are pretty, they're pretty high um, alcohol consumption time. I know um, from my experience, like a lot of kids, they don't drink like on the side um, or after sporting events, but they will drink at their after parties. And another thing with kids getting smarter, so, um, Edina cracked down big time on drinking before the dance or on party buses before dances by having the breathalyzers um, at the dances. But then in turn, kids are now postponing their uh, alcohol consumption to after the dance and at their after parties. And so, um, like, kids are not going to go to the dance if they know that they're going to be people there to nail them if they're drinking. And so, um, I don't know, I think that that's another big part of kids getting smarter as um, they know when they're going to get caught and when they're not going to get caught. And so if they can do something that allow them not to get caught, they're going to do it. And, um, yeah. And uh, as, like, it's embarrassing that we had 85 consumptions last year even though there are a lot more than 85 people drinking, like, that, that's just brutal. And, um. Um, I'm just going to speak about the mouth because people quick. I'll try and speak loud. But for every one consumption that you see on here, as a student, I would probably guess that there's an extra three people for every single consumption that you see on here, if not more. And that's me trying to not overestimate. And I'm not trying to make it sound like a horrible thing, but most kids don't get caught. Most people that we know that drink, have never gotten a consumption, especially the kids that drink the most. And so 85 is a huge number, but when I'm thinking of kids that I know that have never gotten a consumption, I'm just baffled that there's only 85 things there. So, yeah, I'm just fine now. You don't need to do that. Did you want to say something? So now we're just going to talk. Oh, did you want to see this slide? Sure. Okay. Um, so we know dances are a really big hot spot for drinking. Even the students that as Drew said, um, don't drink normally, will drink at dances a lot of the times. 
So Edina implemented a new policy where breathalyzers are now at every dance, and I think it's every three students that walk through get breathalyzed. Um, and if a student is caught with the breathalyzers or just caught at the dance um, under the influence, they're prohibited from the next two dances. Um, and I know that the breathalyzers have really, like, stop drinking before on the party bus before the dance, even at the dance too. But I think it's led to like a new problem where it solved one, it also led to the problem of binge drinking after. Instead of like kind of spreading it throughout the night now, they're on the bus home to their after party or at their after party and they're binge drinking so that they can get the same drunk feeling just in the time that they have. Um, so that's another example of binge drinking in the high school. Um, and Edina also, well, Sober Squad has been talking about having drug dogs at the, do you want to talk about this one? Um, Edina has like a full fleet of drug dogs, but right now they're letting almost a lot of other high schools use them. They're not using the drug dogs right now. And so Edina has been talking about actually starting to use our own drug dogs for Edina High School. And so they think and they've talked with, the League of Women Voters came in and they talked with Sober Squad students who all said that they thought it would be a good idea and that people would probably stop bringing drugs to school if they knew they were going to be dogs searching for drugs. And so that's, there's been talk about Edina using their drug dogs at Edina High School, but we haven't seen them yet. So we don't have drug dogs as of now. And um, the Edina High School PTO sponsors a program for parents on teen social life and the law at the high school at the beginning of the school year. Um, I think that it's, it was a good opportunity for the parents to kind of become informed on like what's going on at the high school, like especially for, I think, the 10th graders who sometimes their parents are like, oh, it's their first year of high school. Like, they won't be around alcohol and drugs. Sometimes they're a little oblivious. Um, I think it kind of opens their eyes to what's really going on and like that their kids may be involved with alcohol and drugs. And I know a lot of parents do know what's going on with their kids, but if they didn't or if they were kind of pretending that it wasn't happening, that this really did help make them more aware. Um, and it also educated them on the consequences so that the parents knew and the parents could go tell their kids if they didn't know. Or parents like to talk. And if parents will um, <laughs> say that, like, oh, wow, I didn't know that this would happen if my kids got caught drinking, like, maybe that they'll go and tell their friend who will tell their kid, who will tell another kid. Or, like, it could just start a chain reaction. But I think, like, parents need to start taking um, the issue more seriously and talking with their kids about it a lot more. And um, also... The Edina Public Schools resource, uh, oh, at Edina we have um, a pol police liaison who is at the school and um, I don't, do you, do you want to address this more? I hate to say it, but I don't exactly know his name off the top of my head, but he does come in and speak to us sometimes at our meetings. And he also is always at the school for questions or he's always available. Dr. Hubbard used to, I mean, Police Officer Hubbard used to be our police officer, and he had always had candy and stuff, but he, we have a new one this year, and I haven't really got to talk to him as much. But quickly with the parents, um, looking at Sober Squad, I'd like to have two events held at the high school this year that have never been held before. The PTO is a great place for parents to go, but they're not always getting the student interaction that they would if we had a student panel. If we had a student panel, we'd not only give a presentation similar to this and allow parents to see how many kids are doing it, what kids feel about it, but also parents may be a little bit not think it's that big of a deal, but I think a big part of that is they don't know all of the dangers of it, not even just the consequences for their kids, but they don't know that their kid could die. They may not, they may just like the kids think it's a social norm and not realize what can happen. So we would hold this in FIC or EPAC, which are both the theaters at our school, and it would be a presentation followed with questions. So we'd have a student panel of Sober Squad, you know, committed, or just any student, and the parents could, we'd pass around a mic and they could just ask any question that they'd want. So, and then the second event would be a pre-college senior talk. So this talk would be held 
in one of the same places, kind of like an assembly for all seniors, and it'd be teaching kids the difference between drunk and dying. Because I think when people go to college, a lot of people don't know, oh, she's passed out. She's not, you know, she's not breathing. People don't know what to look for, and if you're also drunk, it may be hard for you to figure out which one it is. And so if kids go to college knowing the warning signs for themselves, for their friends, we could all be safer in college. I just think it would be a great way to kind of send off and leave a legacy of our year at the Edina High School. So that wraps up our presentation. So now any questions that you have, we would love to answer. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you for coming here and talking with all of us. Um, and thank you for the, the work that you're doing uh, at the high school. It's, it's really awesome to hear everything that you um, had to say tonight. Uh, my question is around your uh, parent involvement, and so how often are you able to talk with parents, and, and what is that reception like? Um, and then I guess as we move forward, I'm wondering how can we support that, that relationship and that dynamic? Um, as of right now, Sober Squad is mainly for students. We don't do as much with the parents as we do with the students. It's more us speaking to students, but there's a PTO Thing coming up there's multiple PTO things per year where they ask us to come and we go just talk with parents it it's usually the PTA board PTO board so they'll ask us questions that they can then give to like pass on it's not always us sitting talking to a huge group of people it's us talking to a couple people and then passing along and um, I can give you guys details about that at our next meeting because I'm actually going to a PTO meeting soon um, and I'm gonna let someone else talk if anyone I mean, again, just with, um, this is like more Edina committed, but we kind of want to keep parents out of our program just because when parents get into it, it's more like this is a punishment, like you can't be doing this. It's like a scolding almost. But um, when it's like kid to kid, like if Drew's telling me like, Annie, what are you doing? Why are you drinking? I feel like I'll take that much more personally than if like my mom is yelling me and saying like, go to your room, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I'd say, um, well, as a member of the golf team, we, like, for me, I have a lot of buddies that we hold each other accountable, whether it's spiritually or um, on the course or in school or just in our social lives. And so for us, we, like, we know what we're doing, and we, um, we make sure that we're doing the right stuff. And so for me, if I were to talk to one of my buddies, I actually had to talk to him recently about his um, alcohol use. And... We and it really impacts you if you are told by someone that you respect and know and trust that they're not okay with you um, if it's consuming alcohol or uh, taking drugs. And so for me, like if my if one of my friends or accountability partners said, "Hey, you should take a look at this," then that would impact me more than parents because a lot of kids they. Like, they take their parents seriously, but they don't, they're not going to respond as well to them as they would um, one of their peers. And so that's just a personal connection for me. Um, um, I think it's key for parents to get involved with um, the Sober Squad. And I don't know about Edina Committed. I feel like they're more student-driven. But Sober Squad should um, inform the parents and tell them about the surroundings and what's really going on behind the doors of our school and what's going on in our community because the parents are a huge influence on the students and on their children. So for them to be informed on everything, I think, would benefit the students and benefit our community in helping them um, improve and lower our alcohol and substance use. Um, I agree with both statements. I think that definitely parents have a strong influence on children, and so do teenagers, and they're two different influences. So if you combine both, then you have both, and that's even better. Um, I think the place we're looking for parents is more outside of school. So how are you talking to your children about alcohol? How are you reacting to your children about alcohol? Do you set a, like, are you a mobile? a role model for your children. It's harder to involve them at things at the high school because we meet on Collab Wednesdays and most parents are at work or when we speak to classrooms, it's, you can't really have parents come in. And so I think that the parents' role for us is more with their individual student. Um, and then you also asked how you guys could help us. 
And I think that support of our events or like a blog post about the fact that we have these events. I mean, more parents are probably going to read your blog than if we tweet about it. They're not following us. They won't know. And so it might help us to get that kind of publicity from you guys or just in the endorsement. Like if you said this would be a really great thing for parents to go to. Well, if your city council is saying this is a great thing to go to, maybe parents would be more likely to show up. Um, I'm not exactly sure. But also, if you guys had anything that you think we should add, you guys are parents, and we're not. And so if you had things that you guys really wish you knew or would really want to know, those would be things that you could tell us and then we could put in the PowerPoint. Because that's what we, we want to give them what they want to know. Does anybody else have anything to add? I have, I have a question. You've spoke mostly about um, alcohol and touched on marijuana slightly. This may be anecdotal, but is there any concern in the high school ranks about um, prescription drug abuse, medicine cabinet rating, and using that as an ad additional or alternate means to get high before events that's not detectable? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I also, I do have statistics about prescription drugs that I can bring to you guys. Um, we focus on, we don't only focus on alcohol and marijuana and sober squad, we focus on all of the things. It's just those are the two most common and so in the presentation today, that's what I included in the slideshow, but I can bring those statistics to our next meeting, but kids are definitely using prescription drugs. It's definitely increasing. A lot of parents, like, I do think that it's very prevalent. I think that alcohol and marijuana are more prevalent, but... As kids use weed for long enough, they start to want something more than marijuana. And so I think that's when they turn to prescription drugs or cocaine or anything like that that's a little bit stronger. And I've even seen some kids in my grade that have turned to things that are stronger because they've been smoking marijuana since sophomore year and it's just not the same anymore. Um, and at dances, there have been kids where you see them at the dance and you're like, yeah, you're not, you're not completely here with us right now. Um, dances are a lot safer because they do the breathalyzers and there was actually not a single kid caught with alcohol at our last dance. Um, but, and when they say they do it every three, if they suspect for any reason that you are under any sort of influence, they can breathalyze you. And there are police officers everywhere. So even if you were doing drugs and you were acting crazy, they have the right to come up to you and ask you, did you, were you doing this? And if I mean, if you're on something that's hard enough to be able to be recognized from a dancer. I mean, kids, there are kids that have gotten in trouble for drugs at our last dance. I saw someone, a police officer, pull a kid and he left. So there are things that still happen. It's just the drinking is no longer at our dances. Going back to the prescription drugs, um, I remember last year there was a lot of Adderall usage before um, tests and exams and finals a lot. And throughout the school year, there was a lot of Adderall usage. And um, I haven't seen it as prominent this year, but last year there was. And this year I've noticed and heard of students using hardcore drugs. And um, it's been on an increase ever since. So, And especially during AP tests or ACT, you hear a lot, a lot of kids using Adderall, and it's not always the kids you expect. Eddie Dino were held to a very high standard, and a lot of people want to meet that standard for themselves, for their friends, for their family, or people are just competitive. Um, but some people are turning to things that are not just studying to get the success that they want. I know a lot of kids who have used that on their ACT tests or their AP tests, and that's a, that's a pretty big deal as far as not only is it not safe, but it can also give you an unfair advantage over other students just as far as that. But, like, more importantly, it's really not safe for you. Like, the, the side effects are not good, and, uh, like, if you're not prescribed it by a doctor, it's not safe. And so that's just... Um, I have a funny story. There was a kid in my grade during the AP World Test, and he really, really wanted to do well in it and hadn't really studied, so he took lots of Adderall before, and he got so focused on his pencil that he hardly answered any of the questions on the test. So kids really don't understand what they're using or putting in their mouths. And so, I mean, he suffered from using it. So some kids are benefiting, but a lot of kids don't even know what they're doing. And by putting something in you that you have no clue what's going to happen, 
I've also heard of kids taking down the ACT and getting super shaky and getting a really bad score because everybody reacts to it differently and if you don't have ADD at all, it may not work for you at all. And so it might even have negative effects on you. So I think that's one of the main problems with prescription drugs is people look at what they do for other people that have the condition and that doesn't mean that's what they're gonna do for you. So. I have, oh sorry, I just have one um, question. It's, it's actually more of a statement. So from um, your previous presentation, you talked a little bit about when um, there is health education around substance abuse and you know, like it, it, either in the junior high versus the high school and if you have assemblies and stuff, can you just tell the wider group sort of uh, when there's actually formal education about substance abuse, how that relates to you know, where you're at in high school or prior to high school, and then what sorts of education opportunities there are in the high school after that sort of health class is over. So everybody takes health in seventh grade and ninth grade, and we also speak to the seventh graders and the ninth graders during their health class. And so, yeah, I don't, does anybody else want to speak? I'm speaking. So for, um, we take health seventh grade and that just gives us like a basis and it tells us about like, it's like an introduction to drugs and all of the health things that are in the community. And then um, freshman year, that's where they hammer all the drugs and everything. And that's a good time for, uh, for the students to know and to learn about the drugs because that's the year before they go into the high school where they um, actually see it firsthand and will most likely have an experience with it during their high school life. So um, freshman year is a good time for the students to have learned um, about the drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. Um, and just speaking from my personal experience, I didn't take health in ninth grade because I couldn't fit it into my schedule. And instead, I took it in 10th grade with um, Mr. Nielsen, who's the like leader of Sober Squad, you might say. And we spent weeks on weeks learning about drugs and alcohol and it really opened my eyes to like the effects, not that I was using it, but I had seen people using it and what I saw from them and what I learned were two completely different things. Like I knew that it was bad for you, but I didn't know how it affected your body and how it affected your brain and how it affected your future. And um, last year was a really good um, learning experience. And also I think when you are exposed to alcohol and drugs, it makes me, it made me a lot more aware of what I was learning about it, health-wise. And um, does anyone else? Yeah. Um, so I didn't take health um, in ninth grade either, but I took it online. And it's not the same when you know there's someone who's telling you, okay, these are the effects, and this is how it really affects you, and stuff like that. Than reading it through, you know, a lot of paper or in your computer. And then um, this year. Um, I was glad to take human anatomy because, you know, we, we learn about the body and then we actually, um, uh, my teacher, Mr. Sanger, he's really good about telling you, okay, alcohol, how this affects your um, cells and stuff like that. So I feel like that class, even though it's, it's hard, it might seem hard for some kids for um, to learn and follow the vocabulary, still give you um, a good feedback of what actually drugs and substances can do to you. So I think that's a really good class when it comes to learning what these can do to you. All right, and so um, just like a little recap of what we say to seventh graders. So Seventh grade, we kind of go in there and talk about us and talk about the high school. A lot of those kids, since they're in seventh grade, are really interested in what we do. They think we're a lot bigger and cooler. But um, <laughs> let's see. So, um, and a lot of them are really freaked out. They're like, "Whoa, I'm never, I'm never gonna drink. Like, how can you even assume that? Like, so many of you guys drink. That's so bad." And um, I think it's important that we hit them at multiple times. So we hit them at seventh grade, and so they're kind of just plant the little seed like alcohol is bad, drugs are bad, do not take them. And, and then again in ninth grade we talk about more of the effects. Some of them are already using alcohol or drugs. Um, some of them know, like have friends through sports or through activities um, that are using the alcohol or drugs. And so um, we talk to them more about the effects and like the um, what will happen to you if you get caught. 
and um, a lot more personal stories. Like we have um, the health teachers actually leave the room to, uh, like, as an anonymous conversation with the students, and we have anonymous questions. And so it's a little more personal that way with the ninth graders. And for me, I think that it's good that we do it twice, but a third time or maybe even a fourth time is important. And so um, kids need to understand while they're actually going through it because since ninth grade's not in the high school, they're not near as much in the high school scene as uh, at other schools. And so um, since a lot of kids just take it in ninth grade just to get it out of the way because you need to take one semester of health um, in order to graduate, um, and most kids take it in ninth grade, I think that um, some in some way we need to reach them once during 10th and 11th grade as well. It may be a seminar, it may be um, through a core class um, or something like that, just like an activity or anything. Just get them while they're doing it or while they're more so in the scene. And then as well, um, for all of us, we all agreed that a um, seniors going off to college event would be really important because a lot of these kids, since, like, even if you're sober in high school, a lot, like, drinking is even far more prevalent in, at the college level with your parents aren't even around at all. And so if we can get them to understand um, what's safe, like, that it's not safe and, uh, like, the dangers of it, they'll be less likely to maybe get in trouble in college or uh, have health problems that last for life or anything like that. And so... Um, we're doing well in hitting them twice, but maybe um, a sec or a third or maybe even fourth time would be necessary. Oh, yeah. um, also, I think just like the presence of these two clubs, Edina Committed and Sober Squad, like I know last year our homecoming king, Mark Bryan, he was in both of these clubs. And I think that if you get, like we want to get kids like that involved in this like non-drinking thing. Because people look up to them and are like, I want to be like him. He is cool. And if we can get kids like that involved in this program, then I think it could have like a lot of potential and just, I don't know. Do you get what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. And also I think just like the presence of the two at the school, kids are just reminded like, okay, there are other kids that are like, that understand that this is bad. Like maybe I should start like, take a second like guess at this and I, maybe I shouldn't be doing this just yeah and as far as it's like um as sad as it is like kids who are on a sophomore freshman sport or um not like as influential may not like their words don't carry as much like that's too bad but it's the truth and so um Edina committed does a great job at getting the top athletes um, the captains of our sports, which are some of the best in the state, um, to say, hey, we're not going to do this. Um, and their words are going to carry more meaning. And so if we can get more people on board as outspoken and legitimately drug-free and alcohol-free um, athletes and uh, activity leaders, then that will really help us to see more results because kids listen to other kids. Um, so we have what is sober for seventh grade. Ninth grade is what is drinking going to do to me? And I've always been a strong believer that we need something in sophomore year that is, what is my legacy going to be at Eddie Dunn High School? What am I going to do here? And how am I going to make this impact my future? And I think that the sophomore talk, they already know that, like, the effects and the consequences, but sometimes that's not, that's not the thing that's going to stop you. It's the, you know, when you're older, you can't just get drunk every weekend. You have a job and you have this. And I just think that sophomore year is the, like most prevalent year where kids start drinking, as you saw, they said 15 to 16, and that is sophomore year. And I just think that because we have nothing sophomore year, you don't, we technically don't have anything in the high school. We have our clubs, and they, as Annie said, they're very, our presence is known. People know who we are. Anyone can sign a contract. You know, we really try and involve everyone. But because we don't have anything that is set up to talk to the sophomores, I've always thought that's something that we could add. And so I don't know exactly how we're going to do that, but I definitely think that adding the senior talk is one way to involve the seniors. And um, just it, we should have something for, every, like, not every grade. We don't have to speak to every grade, but there's nothing wrong with having something for the grades or having a one-year thing that Doc Lock, our, pres 
our principal gives. You know, these, these are the things. Everyone loves Doc Locke, loves Doc Locke. And so hearing him come up and talk about things in a fun way and make jokes, I just, because sophomore year, you go in early and you have a presentation. <laughs> well, last year when we were sophomores, we like came in before all the other grades, and they like did like an introduction and like were like this is like the high school and this is what we expect from you guys, and it was like more of a welcome to the high school thing in the morning. And then um, in the, like right before homecoming, they had a sophomore seminar thing where they had a woman come in who spoke about her experience with um, drunk driving. And that was just right before homecoming, so it like um, hit people to not drink or like drive drink while driving around homecoming and stuff. And it personally hit me really hard, and it like inspired me to like be like inspire other people to be more safe with it. And I thought that was a really good idea, and it hit a lot of people. And you saw like a lot of reactions there, and a lot of people took that to the heart. And while the sophomores were doing that, the juniors and seniors were watching a mock crash, which um, was outside and was put on by the theater group of kids. So, And they took Mark Bryan and Ann Davolos, who are two seniors that probably every single person in the high school knew, and they had them be the actors, and so they actually got, like, killed. Not, I mean, they had, like, blood all over there and, like, a ripped dress, and so we kind of watched, like, our sacred seniors, like, be really hurt by a situation of drunk driving. A lot of people cried. A lot of a lot of people were crying because this lady was coming up and explaining how her daughter died and all that stuff. So it was a very moving thing. But the hard thing is, it's so moving and kids still do it. And so that's where we have those speakers. And it's what she said was amazing. And I think she left a strong impact on a lot of people. And then we're there for the after and the presence and. I don't know. It's too bad we don't have two speakers. You know, one at the beginning, one at the end. I don't know. Does anybody else have? Do you have one more question? Where could um, curious parents go to get more information or resources about what you guys are doing or your upcoming events? Um, do you guys have a web page? Um, we actually don't, but that's a really good idea. In my honest opinion, I have never thought about that. Um, but I think that that could be really cool. Um, we could definitely look into that. We have 52 students this year, so there's probably at least one that's tech savvy. It's not me. <laughs> but there could probably be someone that could make a web page for us, and we could do something like that, or we could kind of post numbers. I mean, I think any of us would be willing to get a call and even talk about it because it's something we're passionate about. But that would be another reason why this parent forum would be like really cool because it would be one night where you can ask every single question you've ever had and we will answer it. I mean, unless it's something super gossipy, but we could say anonymous names. But we like we will try and answer every question we can. But yeah, we should make a web page. Do any of you want to make a web page? Okay. <laughs> We're gonna make a web page. And then we will send you a link and maybe we could be posted on the blog. But we will start working on a web page. Are there any other questions? <laughs> Do you guys think it would be more noticeable if we could get a spot on the Edina High School page, like a link? Mm -hmm. Do you think that? Do you think that if we posted something on the side of the Edina High School page, that that would get more viewers than if we had our own web page? Because maybe we should do something like that. I just feel like making our own web pages. Yeah. Yeah. Because we obviously have like the email for our instructor, and I think that parents could email him, but. It'd be cool if we could have an actual link where, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. I have a question for the Edina Committed. Have you guys thought about venturing outside the high school and speaking to the um, sports associations that a lot of the high schoolers participate in that aren't governed by the high school activity league? Because most of the sports, many kids participate in outside the high school, but still within mm -hmm. your high school ranks. So like, are you talking about like, like club sports. Yes. Um, we have not 
ventured out of the high school yet. Again, the program just started up at Edina um, last year. Um, but that's definitely, again, something we could consider, um, like, looking forward. I think we want to get the program, like, definitely established at the high school and, like, make it well known. And then, I don't know, hopefully, like, kids will be a, like, kind of take what they learn from this experience and bring it to their club teams. But we can, like, I know there's an Edina soccer club. Is there an Edina golf team, like, yeah. club season? I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. The hard thing is a lot of um, a lot of Edina kids are, like, really spread out on club teams. Like, Megan and I are on the EP soccer club team. I don't know if you guys have, like, yeah. other club teams, but... You may not make your city's team or all those kinds of things. So, but that's definitely something that we could say. If you could get more representatives, then kids mm -hmm. that do go to EP could even bring it to EP in a weird kind of way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for golf um, and for hockey. My little brother plays hockey. Um, he plays in the Bantam Elite League um, out of season for golf. Um, during the winter, I play in the Future Collegians World Tour along with um, five other kids on my team. And so... Um, with Edina sports being at such a high level, basically, if you're on a varsity or JV sport, you are playing it year-round or close to year-round. And so it's important for us to make sure kids know that, hey, if I do, like, doing drugs or alcohol out of season, um, it's going to keep you safe. Like, I think that's more of something for Edina committed to do with um, saying, like, hey, like, that's, you may not get in trouble with the state high school league, but you're going to wipe out two weeks of practice with, um, like, one night of binge drinking. And so um, that is another thing where we could venture out. Um, any other questions? The role we play within the city is we advise the city council on issues. Are there resources that you feel you need to do your job better or that you think that the city or the school district or someone could be providing that you're not you don't have access to right now? Um, we used to be funded, and we no longer are being funded by anything, so we really have no money. Um, but there's not that many things that we really use money for. Speaking is free, and these events that we would host would be completely free. And I think that's kind of the beauty of it, is it's all information knowledge based. And so if we could get more of like a support, I feel like that would mean worlds more just because that's what we kind of need, or like people like you who are like well established and you know a lot about this stuff already, to tell other people, hey, this you could actually learn a lot from this. Like I even learned from this, and I already know all of this stuff, you know, or a blog post. I could write it. I'll write it, <laughs> but it'd be really awesome. Um, I mean, I don't know if this this probably isn't something that like you guys would fund or anything, but I know Edina committed um, talked about getting some like I don't know. Do you know how sports teams sometimes when they like before a big game they'll walk out of their locker room and they like slap slap a door or something like that? Um, we talked about getting like a poster that says Edina committed, and then having that be the thing that teams like slap right before they go out the door, just as like. Cute. A reminder, like, yeah, like we're all in this together. I don't know. Um, but I know our principal said that he could probably um, help us fund that, too. And then, yeah, also um, at the Lake Placid Conference over the summer, they had um, posters. And so these posters are, like, you get someone like this Mark Bryan kid last year, and you take a picture of him in his football outfit, and he, like, there's a quote on there that says, like, sober all throughout high school or just some kind of quote like you know two and a half weeks uh, or drinking wipes away two and a half weeks of training and you just hang that up a lot of schools have done this around the country you hang it up in your school and then you know kids walk by it every day and they're like hey that's cool and I don't know so that's another thing that Edina committed talked about doing but yeah I think funding wise our principal said he could help us out so um, I just kind of thought of this. If there was any speaker that you guys know of, 
I mean, Sober Squad or just for the school in general, Sober Squad, we're always looking for speakers to come in on Collab Wednesday to give us more information because sometimes we have to resort to CNN and look at like the new news about alcohol and drugs. And not that that doesn't work, but having so someone actually come in and give a presentation. Like we had the League of Women's Voter come in. League of Women Voters come in and they did, they actually have a typed up document about a lot of the things that they've learned from us and also things to share with us. And so that's what I use for a majority of the presentation. And so things like that are super beneficial to us because I learned more from that document that I had in multiple years in Sober Squad just because they have so much knowledge and they have all the statistics behind it and things like that. Anybody else have anything to add? Great. Thank you very much. This was very informative. It was great to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll keep moving with our agenda. Um, next, we're just going to do some quick work group updates about the different work groups that our commission is divided into. Um, and we'll, following the conversation we just had, we'll start with youth. Who would like to give an update? So um, the youth subgroup, uh, a lot of our focus, as you could probably tell from the presentation, has been on uh, youth substance abuse and um, alcohol and marijuana use following um, the pub publication of the uh, student survey over the last year. Uh, we're also looking at bullying um, uh, among youth in addition to um, general youth topics that we've discussed in years past, including nutrition, obesity, and maternal child health. Any other youth members who wanted to contribute? Great. Um, the general health, senior health update? Uh, sure. So I think this year was, was a bit of a restructuring year for all of us, and, and we have some new members in our subcommittees, and we, we kind of restructured our subcommittees. Um, as I think about our general uh, health and adult, uh, one of the main things that came out of that was the work that Kristen took the lead on with the e-cigarette policy uh, or proposal uh, that outlined the risks that we had around the use and, and uh, the uh, increasing frequency of e-cigarette use in the state uh, that did go to the city council and was ultimately uh, uh, passed. So that was, that was a, a good thing that came out of our group. Um, then also we've uh, got a uh, uh, so, uh, policy or proposal in to the, to the city council around health and all policies, which I think is still pending action, and we've been certainly participating in the, in the visioning process with the city. Um, anything else that you wanted to add? Um, I think Matt has kind of taken the lead on looking at the Grandview redevelopment from a health and all policies mm -hmm. perspective and kind of keeping us up to date on that process, and I'm guessing he will mention that later as well. But um, I also participated in the sidewalk uh -huh. discussion this past couple weeks, and I was at the contentious meeting. <laughs> um, and it was, it was a challenge, because uh -huh. I was one of two people who was in favor of adding sidewalks. And I will say that um, Mark Nolan, the transportation planner who did the presentation, did a fabulous job in the face of what he was dealing with in that meeting. Um, so it was interesting. There was, I think, the other meetings went better in terms of people were much mm -hmm. more supportive overall of sidewalks. And from reading his report that's going before the city council, I believe, tomorrow, it sounds like people in general are much more supportive of sidewalks um, than the meeting I happened to be at. And then we are also sitting at the table for the Edina Act on Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm. um, that group is meeting every other month. They are in the process of completing their assessment of who is serving seniors in this community and kind of what our current state of responsiveness to a dementia-friendly community looks like. Um, the next meeting is actually next week, so if anyone's interested, it's next Tuesday afternoon. Um, so we're participating in it. And then also in the Bloomington Edina Richfield State Health, Health Improvement mm -hmm. Program um, is the other part where we have a spot at that table as well. So any other comments from the General Health Senior Committee? Okay, the communications work group. So um, this year um, we've uh, helped, uh, I guess really helped the other subgroups on mm -hmm. some of the communications, actually, yeah. things that were already touched on. Um, so particularly we had drafted an advisory communication 
um, related on the, to the Grandview project, uh, referencing the importance of um, considering the health of the people that live and uh, work in Edina and any of the planning. Um, and the good thing is, is that we uh, have learned over time that you know there's enough time to have that input get into the final planning process, um, which is a great thing. Um, and so I, I think we're going to continue to give input over the year, uh, as um, over the planning process for the Grandview Development Project to ensure that that those considerations are made. Um, secondarily, um, we updated. Our communication that we had done in 2013 related to visioning and health and all policies to uh, make it known that, you know, again, we feel as though uh, health is, should be a significant uh, consideration uh, for the council and for the city as it uh, looks to update the visioning. Um, and again, that'll be an area where we participate as a commission. Um, I think the e-cigarette discussion was already had where we had <coughs> drafted and put together some early communications and then that was kind of closed out by um, the general uh, senior group. And then the, the last thing we had, I think, had a significant contribution to this year was some updating to the city's website um, on the commission, um, including providing some more information about uh, the uh, relevance of Bloomington Public Health as it pertains to the city and the residents. Um, and again, something that comes up often is that a lot of people in Edina don't realize that's a resource for the city um, and that Bloomington Public Health serves the city. Um, as well as uh, just making it a little bit more easy to navigate and have an understanding of what our commission does and how it interacts with the city council. That's it. Any other updates, work group updates? Anyone wants to add? Okay, move ahead to correspondence. Any correspondence this month, Jeff? Okay, um, chair and commission member comments. Uh, I kind of grabbed my comments in the general senior health. The only other one that I wanted to mention, and I, this was kind of in reference to the question I asked them about resources, was that um, City Council Member Brindle has twice now asked Scott Neal during a City Council meeting about the loss of Kathy Iverson from the city in terms of what is the school district and what are the city going to do to respond to the fact that the city and the school district have no chemical health coordinator at this point. Um, and at the last meeting, Scott Neal did say that he was having discussions with the school district and they were trying to look at what that position could look like in the future. So it sounds like they are working on it. So I was, that's why I essentially I asked them, are there any other resources you think you need? Because this would be a perfect time to weigh in on that discussion. So that was really the only comment I had. Any other commission member comments? Staff comments, Jeff? I guess the, the next thing's coming up for uh, the staff is, or staff involved things, is um, the local public health grant agreement between the city and the state is coming due and will be at the council meeting, or on the council agenda tomorrow night. So hopefully that will be signed. And then we will be going in January to have the council authorize the contract with Bloomington Public Health for 2015. So that's kind of the timeline for those two items. Any other comments? Um, Jeff did send out our 2015 meeting calendar, so everyone got that in their email. Um, so our next meeting will be Tuesday, January 6th. It'll be our regular meeting. We'll be back in the mayor's conference room at 6.30 p.m. Any last thoughts, comments, anyone want to add? Mm -hmm. going to the Grandview That's right. The Grandview meeting is this Thursday evening, I believe. Is anyone planning to attend? I'm planning on attending. Yeah. Any other comments? Questions? Okay, then I'll take a motion to adjourn. Unless we want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. meeting adjourned. Thank you.